And ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine? What came to my mind was to invite my vlogger friend from Toronto, Canada, to come to Jamaica and celebrate the 151st anniversary of the Mayan Bay Rebellion. And guess what? It is by destiny she's here. Welcome to In the Streets, Jenny. Thank you for the invitation. Jenny, how do you feel to be here in Jamaica? I know this is the land of your birth, but how did you feel experiencing the 151st anniversary of the Mayan Bay Rebellion? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's, it's the greatest experience I've ever had, and I've had a few great experiences. But uh, even though I knew of Paul Bogle and you know we celebrate our heroes here, I didn't quite understand what the struggle was really about. I didn't understand what Paul Bogle experienced until I came. This march not only opened up my mind physically, it opened me up spiritually. And I think after having done this walk, I won't be the same anymore. What was it like at about, say, 6 o'clock when the candles were lit and you know it is about to happen? This is the candlelight vigil of 1865 being reenacted as it was at the same identical time, 151 years later. What went through your mind when you saw it? I was very moved. It, 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 it was no longer a physical thing. I was physically here, but all of a sudden I feel like I was being transported spiritually. Because for the first time, I was understanding African spirituality. We are told as children growing up, you know, uh, uh, and I always hear how African spirituality is demonized. And so standing there in front of the table where the candles were, and having someone explain to me that this was my roots, and I was ready to fully engage in that. And you actually participated. I see you at one time walking around the table, and of course when they break bread, you participated in that bread-breaking ceremony. So it was a wonderful experience for her. But it gets a little bit more serious than that, what she just told you, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, she traveled all the way from Toronto, suffering from jet lag, tireless night before in planning to come to Jamaica, and then had to stay up all night. What was it like, say, about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning? Tell your fans out there what was going through your mind, were you hallucinating or what? By, by 2 o'clock in the morning, I started to feel the pinch, uh, <laughs> really feeling that tiredness. Um, I was struggling to stay up, struggling to, to save off sleep at that moment. But my husband kept, you know, pushing me. He said, you said you're coming for purpose and you, I'm going to make sure that you do not sleep. And so trying to keep up in itself was a struggle, fighting off jet lag, and I was also very hungry at that point. <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, at that time there was heavy, heavy criminal drumming going on, so there was never a dull moment. But can you imagine what Paul Bogle went through after being up all day the day before, through the candlelight vigil into the wee hours of the morning, and then walk six and a half miles to Stony Brook? What was it like now, say, at seven o'clock? Let's step it up a little bit. At seven o'clock in the morning. He was completely dead or what, was I, it? I was feeling tired, but when, the, when, when um, the idea that I was going to participate in this walk that our great brother, Paul Bogo, had participated in, it rejuvenated me. I was so excited. I'm thinking there's nothing I can't do at this moment. Um, I can just imagine, can, this is like my seventh year, ladies and gentlemen and my very first time walking the six and a half mile. And it was such an honor for me, I couldn't sleep. You know, even though I felt exhausted, I wanted to sleep, but I just couldn't sleep. I wanted to feel exactly what my ancestors were going through at that time in the wee hours of the morning. Would you invite somebody else to experience this? I would absolutely invite uh, someone to experience this. But what I want to say to the person who would want to participate, this is not a joke. This was a deeply spiritual experience. And for me, when we get to the four mile uh, journey, 
all of a sudden I was feeling pain in my body, pain in my mind. It's almost as if the, the, the ancestors, it wasn't almost as if the ancestors were right there with us. I started feeling angry because when I when that walk started taxing my body, the physical attributes of walking for so far in this boiling sun, I started feeling angry because I'm thinking at this point they would have been going towards that place with a kind of anger, a kind of rage now because they were fed up. They wanted change. And so when I felt tired from having no sleep and physically drained from that distance of walking and knowing that we have to push through, it was really a spiritual moment for me because I had to take it took every ounce, every resolve, every determination within me to continue. I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit but I couldn't quit because they didn't quit and as they moved towards freedom I too had to move towards freedom it was my way of saying to the ancestors I appreciate what you did to, uh, for us I appreciate that and if I stop now even though I felt like I was going to fall down I would have dishonored the spirits of my ancestors and so I pushed through it took every resolve and that is what is changing me. That's what has transformed me. And that's what brings so much empathy for what they had to go through. And now I feel I have a mantle that I have to carry on. Carry on what they started. I can't do what they did, but I can try at least to, to, to stand up and let others remember. We should never forget the sacrifices that they made. And um, so well said, Jenny. Uh, one of the oh, other yeah, things that really startled me and it was it was great. After she walked six and a half miles, ladies and gentlemen, and um, it was just about time for her to address the nation via live radio. So it was just about the right time. So when I called her and I looked at my sister, I saw not a tired woman but a woman filled with the spirit because she didn't say no she didn't say i can't make it she took that bold step on as soon as i handed her the microphone matter of fact the videotape is here take a look at this and you see what i'm talking about greetings jamaica yeah. greetings african people yeah. when i was invited to do this I had two plans. One where I would come here and speak from my heart, and another where, after I finish walking for six and a half hours, I might have to turn to my notes. And guess what? The notes is going to do it today because I am so exhausted. Now, today marks another unforgettable moment in our history, a moment that we must always treasure. Let us give thanks for life. But without life, it is impossible for us to change, to make a difference in our country. I would like to thank Claude Sinclair for inviting me to this revolutionary journey. When he first extended the invitation, I was uncertain if I could make it. But when he asked me if I was ready to walk in purpose, I knew I could not say no, for I have been waiting for this moment. I have been seeking the opportunity to walk in purpose. I also want to thank the Paul Boga Foundation for allowing me to participate in this historical journey. I feel so connected to this movement, to this time of transformation and change. KLAS FM and One Nation Together Peace Concert is a wonderful endeavor. Peace, being the operative word here, is what Jamaica needs. It's what the black man and woman, boy and girl need in this time. For without peace, we will all perish. But what is peace and how can we attain it? The first thing we have to do is rethink the way we deal with our differences. For this is the theme tonight. How do we go about embracing our differences at the time? The first thing we have to do is try to provoke change in our country. Every person must answer these questions for him or herself. Number one. What do we have to do to cultivate and maintain love for each other in a meaningful way? Number two, how can we lessen the divide that separates our brothers and sisters on this beautiful island of Jamaica? Three, what can we do to stop violence at home? How are we going to obtain peace in these days of uncertainty? 
The underlying problem that causes violence and crime in Jamaica is a lack of love and respect for self and others. We don't love ourselves, so we do not know how to love others in our country. Many of us do not know history. We just know what the slave masters told us. Our lives. We are told that our ancestors were slaves, so we resign ourselves to the idea. Many of us see no greatness in the average man or woman or child because we believe our history started and ended with slavery. True freedom must come when we know this is not true. When we see virtue in each other, there is no room to victimize self or the other. There will be no reason to lie, steal, or kill a brother or sister. We have to let go of the shame associated with being African, being poor. We've got to start seeing ourselves as kings and queens, take pride in knowing that we come from royalty. As Jamaicans, we are people who stand up and claim victory in every arena. This is a true test to who we are as Africans. We still know how to celebrate our people. For when you say both and our athletes win, we all win. There is nothing that separates us at this time of celebration. Men, women, and children come together at this time, and there is no rich or poor, no educated or uneducated, no godly or ungodly dichotomy. These differences disappear when we become one. We are not fully aware of our heritage because we lost touch with our African roots. So we are left to figure out who we are because we don't know the power that exists in us. We resort to hating each other, seeing each other as the enemy when the real enemy stand by and watch us kill each other. One of our greatest leaders, His Excellency Marcus Messiah Garvey said, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is a tree without roots. We've got to return to our roots. We've got to pay homage to ancestors as we did today. Our forebears endured unspeakable violence that shattered their bodies and minds and spirits. But out of the dust of slavery, they rose to reclaim their freedom and ours. We take this for granted. We shame them every time we reject our African ancestry. When we curse and kill each other, we tell them that the blood sacrifice they made was in vain. The wicked things done to black people past and present affects our psyche. So, so much so that our mind needs to be detoxified. We have to shed unhealthy thoughts and action that cause us to look down on each other in this society. The only way to truly find peace is to separate ourselves from self-hate and prejudice. The idea that your education or money makes you better than someone else, your light skin make you more important than someone else, these ideas have to go. It is our differences that make us unique, that bring us together to weave this beautiful tapestry we call Jamaica. If you understand that we are nothing without each other, then half the battle is won. We have to release ourselves from ego, selfishness, and greed. We have to cleanse our minds from this inferior and superior complex that keep us in bondage. We know how to come together when there's a natural disaster like the one we had recently. We manage to come together in harmony. We must do this at all times. We must return to the way of our ancestors. For them, it took a village to raise a child. We must not abuse our kids, but must teach and raise them with morals and values. We have to return to a time when the success of neighbor's child meant a celebration for everyone. When we solve our differences with violence, we weaken our race and send a message to the world that we can be separated and destroyed. Beauty lies in the coming together of our people. So we must learn how to embrace and respect people's ideas, talents, and social position, even if they differ from our own. We have to learn to walk away from arguments that threaten the safety of our brother or sisters. When the black man or the black person truly learns to love each other, no one can violate us. No one can penetrate our borders. A strong community will lead to a strong country. If everyone see each other as an ally, we will create borders that no one can penetrate. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. 
This is the only way to obtain perfect peace between brethren. We have got to start embracing our African heritage, educating ourselves about the powerful people of the past and present. We must remember our ancestors were violently ripped away from their homes, lost their language and culture. Because of that, many of us have no spirit, so we no longer connect to each other spiritually. We have to quit telling ourselves that anything too black is not good. We have got to quit using our privileges to abuse others in this society. We have to stop ignoring the plight of the poor and needy, for in so doing, we create animosity in our midst. When we show love to the greatest and the least among us, we create harmony, which acts as a catalyst in building a strong nation. Peace comes when you develop acceptance for self and community. Peace comes from knowing and loving the other person as yourself. We are beautiful people. We are strong people. We are loving people. We know how to come together when it's necessary. And so I encourage you to bond together in your communities, in your schools, in your country, and watch us grow from strength to strength. Be blessed, African people. Think on these things. All the way from Toronto, Canada, ladies and gentlemen, she came here to St. Thomas. In your own calm manner, now that you're not filled with the spirits and so on, what message was it that you, you, you bring and, and, and how you felt in bringing that message when you, you got tired, I mean, through your exhaustion? How you felt when you delivered that message? Well, the first thing, physically getting up on that stage was very difficult for me. But uh, all of a sudden, I just felt this kind of strength that I don't know where it came from. Because now I felt that all this time I've been praying and asking for the opportunity for me to stand before my people and to share uh, my experiences as an African person, to encourage them. So when I got on the stage, all I could think about is these individuals are depending on me. They are waiting for me to, to, to show them that collectively we have the power to make great changes. Collectively, if we are divided, we fall. But when we come together in harmony, when we push through the barriers, when we push through the pain, when we don't allow our weaknesses to break us down, then we can do all things. All things are possible. Our determination, our love for self and the other, and our will to move above mediocre and to stand on the pyramid and accept that we are great, we are African, we are beautiful, we are excellent. At that moment, that's all I wanted to transport um, to our people, that together we are powerful. And when we understand where we come from, understand our heritage and our people, we can move all mountains. Um, you know, I have to ask this question because it's something that really bothers me. And it is always at the forefront of my mind. Crime and violence in Jamaica. You as a Jamaican born from the outside. And um, there's a vlog that she did that I asked her to, to, to do in, in trying to stem the wanton murder, the killing and, 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 and the chaos that is happening in this country. But I'm here to ask her, if you see now that you're in Jamaica, as an outsider here, all these things, and you're actually here, First of all, Jamaica remains one of the most beautiful places on earth. The peace and tranquility that I find here, I find nowhere else. But it does break my heart to see that individuals are killing each other. It just reminds me of when our, our enemies used to prosecute and kill us. Now what, what I'm seeing is that we are turning hate to self and to the other. And uh, as opposed to fighting our enemies or standing up and bonding together, we're fighting each other and that is heartbreaking. So in parting, um, Jenny, what words do you have to say to them? I mean, especially to the young one, young parent, young female, because the other one that is left with quote unquote the luggage. What do you have to say? Well, I just want to encourage um, you know, parents for example, single parent household for example, you know, you, you can't just depend on someone else to raise your kids. You can't depend on our athletes to be our our, our uh, leaders, we can't expect uh, our government to be our role models. You have to be the role model in your household. And our children are waiting for our guidance. 
it is our responsibility to impart knowledge and goodwill to our families. And so I'm encouraging individuals, you know, to teach your children about their history, teach them about love for self, parents, especially black mothers. Stop telling your kids that they're ugly, that they're black. Stop telling the kids that anything that's not good, you know, to be black is not good. Stop telling them that they're not going to come to anything. When our words are life, the words we impart to each other are powerful. And when we, we provide our children with powerful words that encourage them to excel, to believe in themselves, they will have a better nation, a better people. We might be poor, but poverty really doesn't have to show your character. It's a circumstance, and opportunities will change that. The difference between the rich man and the poor man is opportunity and chance. And so while you're waiting for your opportunity and your chance, impart love for self and country. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, very well said by the ever so um, educated and, and motivated and, and witty Jennifer Sappleton, a.k.a. Jenny Wren, a.k.a. international author, blogger, mother, motivational speaker, and of course my friend. Thank you very much for coming to Jamaica. Thanks for Thank you very much. Also, I want to big up Desmond, because Desmond also didn't know what he was going into until he got into Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever want to see a supportive husband of his wife, it's Desmond. So Desmond, big up yourself. He was there for Jenny, and she pulled through. She couldn't have done it without us. A strong man, a strong man. Peace out.